from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2018. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to theCUBE. Here in Las Vegas, it's VMworld 2018. I'm Stu Minun with my co-host, John Troyer. Happy to welcome to the program, I believe it's a first time guest, Absolutely. Noah Wasmer, who is the Senior Vice President and General Manager of EUC or end user That's computing right. at right. VMware. Correct. Thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, absolutely. I'm thrilled right. to be here. Great show this year. Yeah, uh, no, we do a lot of interviews, but we don't have enough room for every single GM, but, but we're, we're excited we got Thank to, to get you in here because in. You, know, it's, uh, you have uh, you had a lot going on at this show. I mean, we've been watching since Sanjay got put in charge of that group a few years ago. Right. Big acquisitions like Airwatch, so uh, t t tell us the, 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 the big news. Yeah, I mean, there's there's several things that, you know, a great a great opportunity for us to showcase some of the big 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 new releases with Workspace ONE. You know, that we're, we're finding that customers, you know, really have loved our product for iOS and Android. We've had a lot of customers doing virtual desktops, virtual apps. Now with Workspace ONE, we've brought all of it together. Seamless, where they can now manage iOS, Android, Windows 10, obviously huge in the market, both physical and virtual, all with one tool. And now even Mac, right, one of the big initiatives we've seen as Mac is a choice, right, where, where employees say, hey, you know, I, I really want to use a Mac, but you know, obviously there's one or two Windows apps that we have to bring to Mac to make it successful in, in the enterprise. And so obviously Workspace ONE really bringing that together. Uh, Great. I mean, Noah, you were early in VMware uh, and left for a while, came back. You've been kind of the one of the architects of this thing. And I was at VMware and, and Stu, yeah, and Stu sure. at EMC. You know, on the server storage side, there was this explosive excitement around virtualization, That's and right. then desktop virtualization and VDI came in. That's right. And I know, you know, we were joking before about the year of VDI, year of VDI but it's uh, been more. Went of a, there. It's, <laughs> I went there. It's a, it's been more of a slow burn, but it's 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 crazy now, and it's it's working, and it's here. What has been? I'm just kind of curious. What has been your philosophy, and where you want to take VMware now that these, you know, with with all these technologies, super useful, super valuable, kind of and trans. I mean, to, to use some buzzwords, transforming the workspace, right? And it's yeah. it's real. So yeah, can, you know, the uh, well, first and foremost, you know, I think one of the things that we've done as we've matured virtual desktops, virtual applications is, is really look at what are the right use cases that they come in, right? It, it, you know, I think for a while it was, every PC is going to be replaced with virtual, and, and I think we've you know, now seen where it makes sense, it's a, a phenomenal technology, right? Where we have you know, folks working from home and, and sensitive data, can we deliver that secure, you know, real-time experience? So I think we've become a lot smarter. The second thing is that heterogeneity is now everywhere, right? People want to work on all these different devices. You know, there's, there's, there's Windows and Mac and Chromebooks, and, and people really want to have that, that ability to work anywhere on any platform that they choose. You know, CIOs are telling us that that they're having a hard time recruiting key talent if they don't give a, you know, users choice, right? And so virtualization now helps us, helps us do that a little bit more in a more sophisticated way. The other thing is that now people can start to run these workloads a little simpler in the cloud, right? We introduced Verizon Cloud now in SoftLayer, you know, on VMC as well, now with Azure, right? So now you're seeing all the tech titans come together and say, you know, run it on your local laptop, run it in the cloud. So we really see a lot of synergies, again, bring it back to Workspace ONE. Yeah, I, I, I like that, the discussion of choice. You mentioned a whole bunch of clouds. Heck, I made a joke that, you know, they have both Coke and Pepsi in the <laughs> Solutions Expo. That's right, uh, So that's that, right. you know, you can choose your containerized beverage of choice. That's right. Uh, there, uh, but at the same time, some Sometimes people don't understand is that uh, when Dell's in the mix with VMware, Dell has uh, you know some really good history with everything down to the desktop. I think back to the Wise acquisition right, and the like. So, what does that whole stack, uh, you know, if you will, look like when you put it together? How does that fit? In yeah, your space? and Dell's been a fantastic partner. You know, we, uh, you know, as, as Pat said on stage, you know, we announced a partnership with HP last year, Dell this year. Dell has done a phenomenal job now with what's called Dell provisioning for Workspace One, where out of the box you can take a physical Dell PC, power it up, and go directly into that that local management. You know that that is managed over, over the air, that you know, deliver the right applications, the right services, the right security patches. And one of the really interesting things is you know, Dell command tools underlying the OS now can be all managed by Workspace ONE. You know, you tie that to you know, the solutions like Dell Complete where you can get VDI in a whole stack with Dell. Now you can start to say, you know, bring together that, that whole solution of physical laptops, virtual, you know, really makes sense to tie it all together with Dell as an overall provider of the complete solution for enterprise. No, one of the interesting things in the cloud evolution the last few years is the is the rise of GP, GPUs, right? We, it's, yeah. not, it's not just a box of x86, yeah, uh, you're x86 on. things. Yeah. You've got all these GPUs in the cloud. That kind of 
boomerangs straight back to the to desktops. And how no, so how important is that? And how can her, workspace? Uh, you know, Horizon, Horizon and Workspace take, yeah. take advantage you, of that. You know, that was, it was one of those things I wish we could have, the, you know, one of the couple of customers I talked to today said, you know, I said, how's it going? You know, just flat out, you know, tell us the goods, the bads, and they said, I have to say the Horizon experience is amazing, right? And, and part of that I think is because we have that back-end GPU power that we've never had before where, you know, there's, it, it literally is difficult to tell the difference between physical and virtual. Uh, you know, we have a lot of our customers, some in, in auto, and anytime people are using CAD or, or healthcare where they're trying to do uh, 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 rendering of, of, of imagery, they can now use these back-end GPUs to actually get that full fidelity experience. So it's really been opening up the use cases and, and really making this a, a real solution for especially highly regulated environments. That's super nice. Uh, so I mean, and a lot of news, product news, right? That That's came right. out. Anything that you're particularly excited about or want to highlight? You know, one of the, the biggest things is what we call Workspace One Intelligence. I mean, every software company here is saying, you know, uh, analytics and, and machine learning, and you know, and, and I, I'd, I'd love to bring it back to some real world scenarios. You know, one of the areas that we all know, app compatibility, right? When we're going for that latest upgrade now with Windows 10 upgrading every six months or so, we've been able to look at that and say, you know, which apps are going to be incompatible? How do we go fix them before we do the rollout? And that also comes back to user experience, right? Guaranteeing that the users are going to have a great experience, making sure that we get those patches down, but doing it in a smart way so that we don't break the user experience at the end of the day. I really do think that that is going to be a major thrust you know, for much of the industry as we get you know, bigger and better. Uh, one of the, the facts that I know it, it's, uh, it's interesting to note, just six months in, 450 billion events ingested a month on this cloud service, right? And we're just at the very beginning, so you're going to see some numbers over the next coming quarters and months and just how we're able to improve experience, really remediate security almost instantly, you know, be able to do things like, you know, uh, get rid of the mundane tasks and start to automate out, you know, some of these, these trivial things. All right, so, so Noah, I, I was talking to some of the community members yep. and security came up and, yep. and specifically around EUC, it was like, okay, NSX I understand, but security should just be tables stakes in this environment, shouldn't be something else. Uh, it seemed to be a, a little bit of uh, frustration with how it, uh, how it is today. You know, what, what, what's your feedback yeah, there? Yeah, you know, I think Pat really said it well, is that, that security has to be built in, right? It has to be intrinsic into, into what we're, we're building. You know, one of the things that you've seen, uh, we, we have this solution called Trust Network, where, where we're, what we're trying to do is take the in, information that we're ingesting, all these data points of mobile devices, Mac, Win 10, and now start to share that in a way that, that partners like CrowdStrike, Carbon Black, Symantec, McAfee, Checkpoint, Palo Alto, you know, 11 different providers, all looking at that and saying, if I correlate your data with my data, we are getting insights that we've never seen before, right? And, and the, the, the interesting thing about it is that the difference is real-time remediation, right? You see an event, and so for example, think about it from, from your iPhone, right? If you jailbreak your iPhone, within 30 milliseconds we can say, hey, you know, let's, let's eliminate enterprise data. Leave your personal stuff alone, right? We don't, we don't care, we don't want to know, but let's get enterprise data off. Now, how about on Windows 10? The same same opportunity, right? Something looks strange. Let's, like, you know, you're authenticating on this laptop, and somebody else is authenticating over in, you know, uh, Europe. Let's just prompt for multi-factor, right? Like, hey, something looks wrong. Let's take a real-time remediation. That's the difference. That's the new game changer that we see in this new modern era is, is this ability to see something and just start to go into a normal escalation path of something might be wrong, let's, let's actually take an, take an action. All right, No, I want to give you the, the final takeaway. You know, you, you've, you've been in this part of the market for a while. It's gone through a lot of changes. For, for people that hadn't looked at it a little bit, what, what's, what's the takeaway you want them to have? You know, I, I think first and foremost is that this is a journey, right? This isn't like ESX where you pop a CD into the ROM and hit power on and like, all right, we're ready to go. This is one that we say, you know, every three months, can we say how we're either improving user experience, improving security, or radically changing the cost paradigm of, of management, right? And that's where we say, hey, you want to roll out Office 365? Let's make that, you know, a goal for the next three months. Hey, you want to, you know, you want to figure out how to improve access to every SaaS application in your environment? Great, that's next. Hey, do you want to figure out, you know, how are you going to get better insight to where cost is, or you want to move workloads out to the cloud? Here's how we can help you do that. 
that makes our, our, uh, our partners, our customers, heroes every three months, right? Getting out in front of that CIO and saying, here's what we're delivering for the business, this real business value. Okay, and, and just in case for our audience, a, a CD was a thing before we had yeah, Microsoft that's right. OneDrive, that's right. a Google Sorry. Drive where we could have then it was music a USB or data key, which or was things a like little that. Piece it of was this physical world that we lived in as opposed to today, it's more virtual and the cloud. That's so, right. Noah, thanks so much Thank for the so update. Thank you so much, it was a pleasure to work with for you. For John Troyer, I'm Stu Miniman. Uh, stay with us, more coverage here from VMworld 2018. Thanks for watching theCUBE. Thanks a lot.